Hi, I'm Nyla Blackman and this is my OMG interview. Carnival was amazing, honestly. Um, it was my first experience like this, you know. It was a lot of shows, barely any sleep, just going, going, interview after interview. Um, it was a lot, but I definitely enjoyed the experience. I enjoyed the interaction with the people. Um, the festivity, you know, it was just a lot to take in the late night. Um, just the whole experience of performing the song over and over. Each time I performed the song, it was like a whole new experience, a whole new reaction, a whole new energy and vibe. And it was just amazing um, from performing on March on Monday, Tuesday on the Rocks, um, Fantastic Friday, the Marsh Gras. It was such an honor to do a rendition of my grandfather's song. All in all, leading up to the two days on the road, it was just a blast and an amazing experience. My grandfather is the late great Rash Shorty, also known as Lord Shorty, the creator of Soka Music. Um, and I did his song, Watch Out My Children, um, at the Marsh Crow. Um, well, the crowd was very still. It wasn't a very, you know, um, emotional or festive crowd. You know, they. They were kind of distant from where I was, which was on the stage, and um, I didn't spend long there at all. So after I performed, I came to perform, and I left to go to Lara Fett one time, yeah. I think people just, it, it took them by storm, it took them by surprise. Um, I guess they didn't really know that there was like another black man, you know. They didn't know that there was a third generation of black men doing music. And to see that and to see a collaboration with Kess, you know, he's a big artist. Um, you know, and people just gravitate to the song. They love the song. It's different, but it's still familiar. You know, Angela Hunt has that kind of song already, but it's still very different. Whereas, you know, my voice is different and the whole, um, the whole concept and everything was different so people you know people love to work out before carnival so they just took it as something that they would love to do and love to listen to so that's why i think the song got as popular as it did and well you know a new face a fresh face on the scene a lot of these soca artists you know they are much older they've been out here doing it for a while so people are just happy to see something new well i've been mu in music all my life um since i was two years old i was singing but on an actual stage since i was four years old um i did a lot of calypso competitions and soca competitions and just music on the whole um all through my childhood um when i was 11 years old i entered my aunt's um all female band um, Nihilat Blackman and the All Girls Band um, and uh, that was when music really started to happen for me you know because I was around all these different musicians and I started writing my own songs and so at that point in time I felt like I needed to play an instrument to accompany that just being around all the musicians all the time I needed to play an instrument so by the time I was 12 years old I started learning how to play the guitar my mom taught me a few chords and um, I kind of just developed myself on my own for a little while and eventually I took classes but it was my groundwork was on my own um, I was doing music classes outside doing um, piano and pan and uh, so by the time I was 15 years old I was just right singing and writing so much of my own compositions, doing my own music, my own song. My aunt was just like, you know, you don't really need to be in the band because I have so much to go in terms of what I was creating and what I wanted to build for myself. So she organized for me to um, get recordings done. I, I first started with my uncle Isaac, um, Isaac Blackman. He was doing a lot of recordings with me from since I was a child. Um, but when I, we did this particular recording, um, Right before I went to California, um, you know, it was when I was growing into myself and my sound and I felt like, you know what, this is a great sound, you know, it's my family's sound, but it's not what I want for my sound. So it was then that they took me by, you know, Casey Phillips, which is a family friend of us. And um, he put me on to other producers as well to work with um, Kit Israel. And I met the um, Sheriff Mumble, and he's actually who I'm doing my EP with right now. And along this way of working with so many different producers, just putting myself out there by putting little videos on Facebook. Um, one of my videos actually went viral. There was over like 50,000 or oh, how much? I can't even remember how much views just in a matter of like two days and a week and it just went on and just people started hitting me up so you know I had my other stuff out there as well so 
um, I started going to open mics and getting little gigs at like wine bars and Kaiser Bruce Cafe and the True Talk No Lie and New Fire Festival. And I was doing a lot of like, you know, the artsy circuit, the underground type stuff. Um, you know, I had a, a good little following with the people that was following what I was doing on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. And so I was just doing my little thing for a while. And, for the longest time, I've always wanted to do soccer because I felt like, you know, my grandfather left this legacy, you know, he created it and it, it, it didn't go directly in the direction that he really wanted it to go. But, you know, it, it's, it became what Trinidad, what Trinidad is known for, you know, um, soccer is what we do, you know, and I just felt like I couldn't be the granddaughter of the creator. Um, you know, I intend to go really far with my music and, you know, I can't be a Trinidadian and not do soccer music. So. You know, most of the producers that I work with, I'd go to them and say, you know, I want to do a soak and they'd tell me, no, Nyla, please don't do it. And I was like, hell bent, yes, I need to do this. And uh, I went to this one producer, Anson Several. I was working with him for a while, just doing other, you know, pop and um, just niche type music and hip hop. And I told him, I was like, I want to do a soca for um, 2017, and then he was the first person that was like, yeah, let's do it. He was like, that sounds like a fantastic idea. Um, so we played around with a few stuff at first, you know, we didn't, we just say it will happen naturally. Um, one day I came by him and I was telling him about some offers that I had from some people out in Hawaii. And he was just like, that's strange because, you know, he just, he just made a beat call and he called it Hawaii, you know, producers, they name it the most random things. And I was like, okay, let me hear it. And that just happened to be the instrumental for workout. Um, at the point in time when I was in the studio, uh, there was another artist by the name of Zone there. And he, he started singing along with me because I was, I was just throwing ideas out there, having melodies, and he started singing along with me, doing his thing as well. And in that moment, Anson was like, you know, this should be a duet, you know, you should get like a really good one of those big artists to do a collab with you on the song. And I was like, okay, so in a matter of like an hour or even less, you know, like a, probably a half an hour, we had like the first draft of the song done because I write really quickly and so does the other artist zone, you know, so we just flushed out a lot of melodies really quickly and we put it on the track and we had a really good demo done. And so we sent it out to different artists, but I thought in particular that, that Kess would be a great fit for this track. So we sent it to Kess as well. And we didn't hear back from him. Um, a week later, I just happened to be in Johan studio, which is Ultimate Rejects, also known as Mad Men. And I was in his studio doing another pop track, something a little bit more, you know, out there. And uh, Kess, happened to be in the studio that day he came in to voice one of his songs that he was gonna do for carnival and i was like oh my god hey Cass, like i sent you a song i don't know if you heard it or whatever he didn't and so i was like okay well you could hear it right now so i played the song for him and he fell in love he thought it was an amazing song but he felt like the male part of the song needed to be a little more tapered and you know constructed for him you know specifically um so he agreed to do the song and um we got two other writers um michael Teja and pretty to come into the studio along with anson and they wrote the rest of the male part for the song and that's how workout was born the rest is history yeah well, I'm releasing my EP in the summer, which is definitely more alternative in the uh, more nylon niche type music. Um, but I'm also doing another soca, which is still a fusion and a crossover um, for Jamaica Carnival. So Jamaica is just now, so that should be released ASAP. Yeah. I want to be a completely international artist. I want to tour the world doing music, not just soca music. Yes, soca music, right? But any type of music, you know, freedom of expression. I hope to win a Grammy, you know. Um, I want to put Trinidad on the map that we have so much talent, we have so much energy, we have so much culture, we have so much coming from this small island that the world is not aware of exactly how much we have done and it's because nobody ever really sees it true and I want to be that person to see 
it true. Well, Nehalat Blackman is a very special individual. She's definitely been one of my number one supporters going through my whole experience from birth till now. It's overbearing. <laughs> She's always there. It's amazing. It's honestly amazing. You think she doesn't have children of her own, right? <laughs> but, um, you know, that's exactly what you need. You know, you need that family moral support to keep your head straight and on with what your goals are in life and don't get distracted. You know, there's a lot of things out there to distract you. There's a lot of, you know, just fluff. You know, um, you don't, you need to stay focused. Stay focused on your goals. Stay focused on what you want to achieve. And how you go about achieving it because you can get where you want to go but it's how you know you need to have a certain standard and level of moral values and just discipline on a whole and I think that my aunt is definitely somebody that keeps me in a gear whether I like it or not <laughs> and um, you know she's definitely been a huge musical influence she's encouraged me in a lot of ways if I hadn't been in her band I'd never be the person that I am today creating music the way I am performing on the stages the way I am you know I had an outlet from a young age to perform in front of big audiences you know the, the gospel circuit is a really big circuit here in Trinidad and Tobago well compared to you know the secular circuit is big as well it's even more huge obviously but people are not really aware of how big the gospel circuit is as well and having that audience whether it be praising God or whether it be just making people have a good time and feel happy in their heart it was, it's all the same thing to me because it felt like the same thing expressing yourself and using your creativity and understanding how to command the crowd and and just put yourself out there because I was a very shy I was a very very shy child it took me a while to come out my shell and still now I am I'm, I'm only talkative in an interview <laughs> well I'm with my family but I'm definitely a more introverted person but extroverted when I need to be so I'm thankful for her for that no, I definitely was with Outers at a point in time, whereas, you know, she let me, she, she wasn't always like, um, at a point in time, I would say between 15, not 15, 16, um, no, 17 to like, let's say late, early last year. I had a break from her, definitely. <laughs> I definitely had a break from her. She, she left to go to California to live for a while and came back. Um, within that period, um, you know, before she left, you know, there's preparation. And after she came back, there's settling. So in all that time, you know, I definitely had a lot of time to wander and have outside influences and, you know, just find myself in a way without um, definite pressure or like, let's say, um, somebody always there you know so um, I do always have different members of my family always there for me but um, she was all definitely there most um, you know my mom she will always be there no matter what um, but and when coming to my music my aunt was there most there yeah. Um, I definitely like to say thank you to Shop Shari for um, sponsoring my outfit. They're amazing. I love all their fashion. Um, and uh, thank you for all my fans and supporters that, you know, has followed me and been with me on this journey as well. I love you all. And shouts out to OMG. I mean, come on. <laughs> no, definitely one I can tell people. Well, one of my OMG moments was definitely, I don't know how people feel about this, but um, over the carnival season, Kessa and I, we performed at a gay party. And uh, the guys, whoa, it was so intense. They so loved off of me that it was ridiculous. I didn't know how to deal with the intensity. The whole crowd of just gay guys was just like, no, no, ah, like singing this song. And they were like taking turns coming on the stage to take like a, a video selfie with me. And like when, when I came on, like the whole time Kess was performing, you know, yeah, they were enjoying the performance. But when I came on stage, it was like complete shell down. I was like, oh my God, what is this? The enthusiasm was just like it was out of this world and i swear it was one of my favorite performances it was so amazing the reaction was unbelievable like it was unbelievable they were going crazy <laughs> 
that was so an OMG moment. I think that if you were there to see that, it was it was so amazing. <laughs> they take in turns, like they come like move, move, like oh no, like, they're having so much fun. It was so amazing. It was honestly amazing. And the, the other guys, like the DJs and the producer. They were all like in the in the um um DJ booth like oh my god this is a gay anthem <laughs> this is a gay anthem like it was insane how they were reacting it was insane that was an oh my god moment <laughs> you can find me on all social media Facebook Twitter Instagram Snapchat at Nyla Blackman N A I L A H B L A C K M A N thank you guys for watching my OMG interview bye. <laughs> I'm gonna be in the